Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Josh Lynch, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Art of Josh Lynch Edge Sculpt node, uh, Revision 02. I recently updated this node, and uh, it's part of the utility uh, node pack 01 that's available on my store. And what I want to do is just kind of uh, give a, an overview of the way the node works, um, how uh, how I went about updating it, kind of some of the decisions I made. So anyway, um, let's get to it. What I have here is a tile sampler node. And it's just like basic, you know, five by five pattern. There's there's literally nothing else here, you know, like it's, it's just straight up like the scale's a little small at 0.98, but it's just to get something going. And what you will do is uh, you will take a pattern like this and you will plug it into the pattern input here on the edge sculpt node. And then for the noise, I have a clouds too, and that just goes into the noise input. And this is the default output. And so the way I wanted to make this is like, you're trying to get some quick uh, edge sculpting detail for some brick or some stone or whatever kind of pattern you have. And I just want to make it easy for you, right? Um, so out of the box, just straight up, you get something that looks pretty believable, in my opinion, or at least looks nice and varied. So let's go ahead and look at some of these options here, right? Now, let me switch back to the normal map view, because I, in my opinion, a little bit easier to kind of show some of these details uh, than looking at a black and white mask. So when you look at the node, um, you have a sculpt method and method, there's method 01 and method 02. So method 01 is uh, the, the updated uh, stuff. So method 02 is the, uh, if you've used the older version of the edge sculpt node, it's similar to that. But let's go ahead and look at the options for method 01. If you change distant, uh, distance amount, everything gets pretty narrow, right? So it's kind of like the higher it goes, the more like edge knocking you're getting away from the edge of the stones or the tile or whatever you want to think of them as. And then as I'm dragging up toward one, you can see like I, it, it just kind of goes toward the center. Uh, you can go a little higher, but it doesn't really do too much. So we're just going to leave it at one. Uh, the reason I let it go a little higher is in this example, like a five by five, the, the pattern, like this, the elements, the squares, they're pretty large, but you might have a higher frequency thing. And so I don't want to lock or clamp uh, that number on any one. So I kind of left it open. I just remember that you can double click. I wish substance had some sort of indicator, like I could put text, but then it becomes like really jumbled in the readability of the menu. So anyway, um, next what we have is bias. So you have uh, concave going to the left, linear in the middle and convex uh, to the right. So if I go concave here, you can see it kind of lets a little bit more in. And then if you go convex, it kind of tightens it up. And so that's pretty cool. Like you can use these kind of in conjunction with each other. Uh, you know, you can do like lower, lower distance amount, but then like go more concave and it kind of gives a different feeling. So if I look at the height map, you can see what it's doing, right? Like this is, well, it's concave <laughs> and then it goes linear and then convex. So it just think of it like from a side profile standpoint, that's what's happening. Okay. And then going back to the node, we have directional toggle. So directional toggle is pretty cool. Um, it's like if we look at it, turning it on and off, you'll notice that a couple of here, let me collapse these things for us. You'll notice that a couple of sliders pop pop up here, like a few options. And by default, it's just going up. Um, and then there's like angle bias and angle bias clamp. And so what the hell do I mean by that? <laughs> uh, 
So what I want to have here is uh, just by turning this on, you're kind of shifting this uh, one way or the other, right? Like full 360 degrees, like you want the edge erosion to come from the top right, like this way. I want you to have that option. Uh, it's something that when I've been working like a long time ago, I always got pretty frustrated that everything looked really uniform and it took me a while to figure out a, a, a clean way, something that was pretty reusable, uh, in my opinion anyway, to to get this kind of flexibility. So we can go like, just let's do just straight left to right. Yeah, and I'm holding shift to snap here. Okay, so I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit. Uh, okay, and you'll have angle bias. And so as soon as you take that down, it like pretty much kind of turns everything off, right? Like you can see the difference is like pretty negligible. So you may, like if you take the bias down, it's basically turning it off. But if I take this all the way up, you get something that's pretty interesting. So you see how this edge is almost gone. There's like a pixel, you know, cause of the normal map and everything. But you can see like, again, if you wanted like to really slam uh, your erosion from one side to the other or one direction, it's pretty cool. And then we have angle bias clamp. And so the lower I go, kind of the more uh, it lets in. And then the higher I go, it's almost like uh, the top and the bottom edge, because we're going left to right here, disappears. So it's very cool. And then I can go diagonal with it. And I can kind of tweak this a little bit. So it's pretty neat. Like you get a ton of flexibility in here. All right, so we've got the toggle turned off here. And the next thing I want to look at is uh, noise reveal. So the noise reveal uh, is a little different than the distance amount. So like, again, the distance amount is how much it's coming in from the edge. The noise reveal is a little bit more of like a selective refinement. And so as I, as I lower this, you can see that like it does a pretty good job of uh, kind of killing some of these these erosion details from being basically uh, like coming in from every side all the time, right? So if I go low, like it just is gone, you know? So we can go like all the way up with it or we can kind of lower it here to get a little bit more selective. And I really like this because you might say like, oh, I want to have uh, just like some selective hits. And you can see we have a thing here where we are seeing, uh, you know, the same detail. So what can we do to kind of avoid that? Um, we can come in here. Uh, let me turn this kind of back up a little bit. Um, just to, I don't want to jump ahead too much. Actually, I'm going to save this. <laughs> so we have like our noise noise frequency here. So if you lower this, you'll notice that like it starts to kind of smooth out some of this detail and you, you can kind of get just almost like a more cleaner look, almost like stylized a little bit, just a lot, like very simple, right? Uh, if I undo a bit here, I can also use noise soften and that'll kind of blur that out a little bit. So you can kind of use these in conjunction and get like a much soft, softer, uh, result. So let's kind of jump back up here and look at this, right? We have, we're seeing some similar noises. Uh, this is a really good, uh, thing here. Like, I'm glad this is happening because you're going to run into this. So. Uh, what I have here to kind of fix that is I have noise offset random. And so what that does is kind of like it shuffles all the detail around and then you have noise offset. 
So if we go back and we just kind of have like, you can see the same noise here. You can use offset and that'll kind of fix that. So there's a couple of options here. And then we have offset angle, which kind of is another option to kind of spin things around, right? So if I zoom back in, you can kind of see now like this is fixed in terms of like that detail is no longer showing up on the same tile kind of next to each other. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the entire node here. And then let's look at method O2. So method O2, like I said, is uh, in the older version of the node. This is like a similar workflow, but I'll go ahead and, and cover it anyway, because I uh, there is some stuff that I did update in here. Uh, so we have distance amount, which is very similar to what we just had, right? So I can take it all the way up, take it down. I also have this option here, corner soften. And by default, it already has a little bit applied, but that's something to where like, like the bevel here. So you can just kind of like take that up and it kind of changes the look a little bit. It's basically like spinning that out. And then you have quality. So if you're ever feeling like it's not nice looking, you can kind of just up the quality here and it'll fix it a little bit like an extra refinement. So let me undo back here. And then you have the bias, like we looked at concave, linear, and convex. Uh, so concave, you can see like it kind of, like if you're looking at it from the profile, it's kind of doing that. I, uh, and then if we go back up, convex is kind of like more rounded, right? And then all of these sliders in here like noise reveal uh, and the offset they're just the same thing so I take the reveal here I'm looking at my distance amount so you can kind of see the difference in terms of what it's doing so again the distance is like how far in and the noise reveal is like how much noise am I letting through so I hope that was helpful and like a good insight into how this node works. Let me know if you have any questions about it, and I hope you find it useful. Thanks a lot.